Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to read a file from the SPIS file system of the SP32. As target board I'm going to be using an SP32 Fire Beetle board from DF Robot. So basically this tutorial is a continuation of the previous one where we saw uh, how to create an, a file in the SPIS file system and how to write some content to it. Now we are going to check how to read that content. So basically to get started the first thing we need to do in our code is including the spiffs.edge library because as already mentioned in the previous tutorial it will make available to us this spiffs external variable that we will use by calling some methods to interact with the spiffs file system. So we are going to write all our code in the setup function and the first thing we are going to do as usual is opening a serial connection so we can output the results of our program and some debugging messages. After this point we are going to mount the SPIFS file system because we always need to do this procedure mounting the file system before we interact with it. So basically it's just calling this begin method and uh, naturally it's a good practice to check if some error has occurred uh, so we don't try to interact with the file system uh, in case it was not mounted and in that case we are printing here a message so the the user knows that some problem has occurred and um, doesn't try to read uh, the file uh, or write the file afterwards. So basically assuming that everything went fine uh, and in order for us to have some content to read on the file system the first thing we are going to do is actually creating a file if you have already followed uh, the previous tutorial, you should already have a file on your SPIFS file system, but you can just rewrite it. Um, I'm using the, precisely the same name of file that I used in the previous tutorial. You can change it or you can write, um, you can use the same name and overwrite the previous file. That's okay, there, there's no problem with it and everything should work fine. So basically, as we saw in the previous video, in order to write a file we first need to open it so basically we just need to call this open method on our spiffs external variable passing as first input the path of the file so basically I'm creating this test.txt file in the root uh, directory of the file system and then a second argument we need to pass the opening mode and in this case since we are uh, we are going to write the file uh, I'm passing this constant file underscore write to indicate uh, that uh, I'm going to write into the file. So as output I'm going to get an object of this class file which is basically the class that we use to interact with the actual file uh, of the file system. So basically this class overloads the boolean C++ operator so we can check, do an error check over this class just with a simple if condition and throw an error uh, and print an error in this case uh, if something goes wrong. So assuming that everything goes fine, in order to write content to the file we just need to call this print method passing as input a string with the content that we want to write to the file. Then we can check this method basically returns the, the number of bytes written so we are doing a very simple error check so in case this number is greater than zero um, we basically assume that everything was written and in case it is zero we assume that um, it failed to write the content to the file. So in this case, um, after this we will simply close the file. So uh, to complete the operation we need to close the file, so leaving all the, all the resources and indicated that we are no longer operating over this file. And to do this we simply need to call this close method on our file object. So from this point on we should already have a file in the file system to read. So basically the, the next thing that we are going to do is, is reading it. And again, in order to read a file, we need to first open it. In order to open it, we call again the open method and of the spiffs object and we pass as input at the path to the file. In this case, we don't need to explicitly pass the opening mode because the second argument of the open method um, is optional and if we don't pass it, it will default uh, to reading mode. So this is why I'm not specifying here another constant modeling uh, the file reading operation because it is the default one. So we are going to again uh, store the, the file object uh, in a variable and do an error check because uh, we need to make sure the file was correctly opened for reading otherwise it doesn't make sense to try to read the content from the file. So then we are printing here just an helper string to make our content more nicely formatted and then we are going to read the actual content of the file in a loop. So basically uh, we are calling this method, this available method, which returns how many bytes on this file are left to read. 
and to read an actual byte from the file we just need to call this read method on our file object so uh, the loop works like this so uh, we call this read method and we basically read uh, uh, a byte from the file and we directly uh, write it to the serial to the serial connection so we later can see it on the serial monitor and then after we read a byte this available method will basically um, decrease so the number of bytes still left to read uh, will be decreased and then we are going to enter again in the loop read another byte and this will decrease again and so on and so on until there are no uh, no bytes to read um, in the file Note that when I say there are no more uh, bytes to read, it doesn't mean that we are actually uh, deleting the file or, or in such way erasing the file because this, this uh, read method should be safe. Reading a file should not alter it. It's just a way that this file system and most file systems work where we basically are reading content from the file and imagine like there's a pointer and as soon as we are reading content this pointer is going uh, forward and forward so we are always on a determined point of the file but after this if we close the file and try to open it again and read it we will be able to read it again so nothing is changing the file or deleting the file or mutating the file it's just how uh, the API works and how we read the file from the file system this is how it behaves so after this loop completes, after there are no bytes, no more bytes to read, and after we print, uh, we printed everything to the to the console, to the serial monitor. Basically, the only thing we have to do is closing the file by calling again the close method on our file object, so no resources are left hanging, uh, and everything is is properly closed. And that's it. This is how we read a file from the SPIF file system of the SP32. And it's pretty simple and intuitive and very similar to how we would do it in the FAT file system, which is another type of file system supported by the SP32. So the API is very similar. So, as you can see here, I've already uploaded the code for my uh, ASP32 and uh, as you can see here, the content of the file uh, is getting printed, so everything is working as expected. I'm just not uh, uploading it again uh, in order for us to, to not waste a lot of time waiting for the procedure to finish. And as you can see here, basically the content was written to the file um, in the first part and then after we entered the reading loop, uh, the, all the content from the file uh, was read and, and printed byte by byte and as you can see here here is the test message that uh, that we have specified for our for our uh, uh, file and that's it this is how we read the file from the file system hope you have enjoyed this tutorial thank you very much for watching